All right. Before we have the preaching, I want to just take a few moments and just allow God to speak through some of the folks that went to camp, maybe share a little bit about what the Lord uh, did in each heart and give our teens an opportunity to do that. Not put anybody on the spot. We want the Lord to lead. And as he does, just raise your hand. I know we got some in the back right there. Don't be afraid. We'll come back to where you are. We got Brother Stephen here. We got Brother Todd ready to go. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And it's just important when the, the Spirit of God moves and works. Uh, Brother Stoner co uh, quoted a verse this morning that was just fantastic. I don't think you read it. I think he just quoted it. And it was about giving praise and, and tying in those vows together, those decisions that we've made before the Lord. Just sharing with other people. I think God uses the believers to help with accountability, all those different things. So let's, uh, and let me just say this. If you, someone else in here has a praise you've just been holding on to, you haven't had a chance to give it, this is an opportunity you can do that too as well. It's not going to just be uh, for the young people. So if, you, if someone else wants to pipe in and share a praise, you can do that as well tonight. But let's get started. Who wants to go first? You know it's going to be the rough part right here, right? <laughs> Anybody want to do it? Who wants to go first? Going once. There we go. All right. Praise the Lord. I surrender. Well, Let's start over again, brother. Start over. We didn't, we didn't have you on the mic yet. Praise the Lord that I surrender my life to the Lord. Amen, brother. Praise the Lord. Good. Okay. We got one right back here in the back. So, first of all, I had a good week in camp with yeah. all the young kids and got to get to know some of them a lot better. And they're all great kids. Yeah. The first service that they had when we got up there, the night service, he started talking about David and Goliath. And I was just sitting there, I was all like, okay, there's another service that I've heard my whole life growing up. <laughs> there's nothing I'm going to get out of it. But how he worded it was how David had to face a giant. We all have to face certain giants in our life. And we are not able to do them by ourselves. And we need the power of God. Amen. And the last couple of years, I've just been, I was young, dumb, and curious, and wanted to see what the world was like. And the world is not a fun place at all. It's really scary. and. Nothing that I would want any of you young kids in the youth group to ever have to go through or see. Um, I just, that sermon when he was saying that there could be any giant in your life, anything, disrespect or dishonesty or anything. And God just hit my heart hard, um, just... And it just hurt me because I had gone off so astray, and it's not what I wanted. It's, it was out of curiosity. And the Lord just spoke to me really well, and I surrendered my life to the Lord. Amen. And... I'm just asking for prayer with strength and guidance because I know personally I can't get it through my get through this by myself but with the prayer and help of the church I think I could get through this yeah. and God and for all of you who've been praying for me the last couple of years I want to say thank you and just know that I'm going to try to be a better person and let God change me. Amen. It's good, brother. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I like it. Amen. <laughs> it's good. Amen. All right, who's next? Anybody else? We have Nayeli. Oh, we have Seth and then Nayeli. <laughs> All right, as my friends keep um, poking me to stand up and share something. Um, uh, just um, praise the Lord that I was able to um, got a team camp this year for my first year, and um, just praise the Lord about, you know, those powerful messages that I heard, um, as well as giants that Austin pointed out. I, I know there's some things in my life that I need to change, 
and there's giants that I can overcome. So I'm just thankful that I was able to go to team camp and that I was <laughs> able to surrender my life to the Lord. And um, just, um, I know that the, the Lord spoke to me. He spoke to my heart and I just, um, I was, I'm really glad I got to go. I, I just, I've never really felt like this way in my whole life and I was just able to, you know, I could just go there for a week and praise the Lord for that. So, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord for Seth. You know, he got saved a few years back and just been neat to see the Lord grow him and, and he's getting a chance to come to more stuff. Lately, I'm just excited about what God's going to do with his life. It's good. Okay. And then now we have Nayeli. Um, I praise the Lord that I got to go. And... Whew. <laughs> And I praise the Lord, I got to surrender my life to the Lord. And I know it's going to be hard, like, going through it right now because I'm a teenager. And, but I'm excited to see what the Lord has for me. Amen. Yeah. It's good. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I like that. I like them all. Sorry. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Brother Cam. Um, just, please, just praise the Lord I got to go to. It was a lot of fun. Um, the preaching was really good. It was really heart touching. Um, uh, just praise the Lord for all the people that got to go this time, all the first year kids. Um, you know, it's scary to go. You know, your parents are going to be there. But, <laughs> but the parents, you know, they trust Brother Rod and stuff like that to take you, and that's really good. Um, and you know, you have family up there, no matter who you're talking to, even from people from different youth groups. Uh, if you want to talk to them, you know, they'll come up to you and be like, hey, you know, they'll have a full conversation with you just about the Lord. And, you know, if you're not saved, a lot of counselors are up there, you know, they'll talk to you too. Um, and I surrender like my life to the Lord up there, because I've been doing a lot of stuff in my life that I probably shouldn't, well, I shouldn't do. And you know, I'm not really one for reading the Bible. I don't like to read. I'm a terrible reader too. Um, you know, I can't read. I've, I have a hard time reading. So, but this camp has really shown me that I shouldn't probably read the Bible. You know, go to church. Every time there is church, you know, sign up for more things. Um, I hope we just find a good church like we do have now in Alaska so I can do more for the Lord. And just, I just hope the Lord just guides my life for the rest of my life because, I mean, I've done stuff in my past life and it's not worth it. The Lord really, you know, he's the best way to go for this world. Man. You know, you can... You can go out, you know, hang out with gang members, do whatever you want, and have a good time, but that's only going to last for the rest, for just this life. If you go with God, go on his holy path, you have him for eternity. So, and we had 10 kids get saved up there, so that's good. Amen. Um, it's always nice to see someone get saved, especially, you know, if it's their first time. Um... But I believe the Lord can do anything he needs for you and anything he wants for you. Um, I haven't been praying. I haven't been reading the Bible. I haven't been doing anything really for God. And, you know, this camp is a really good refresher. And, you know, it's taught me maybe I should do that stuff. So I just surrendered my life to the Lord up there. And, you know, hopefully he can guide me through the rest of my life. Amen. Amen, brother. Yes. Let him do it. It's good. Who wants to go next? Um, I wasn't planning on doing this. I don't really want to stand up. <laughs> but I, um, we have this message about like alcohol. <laughs> and so through that message, the Lord really spoke to me about not getting involved in alcohol. So I have made a choice to just stay away from that completely. <laughs> 
And um, another thing that's kind of like a burden on my heart right now, but at the same time it's not. <laughs> um, I didn't surrender my life to the Lord, but I feel like I'm about to, and I need prayer about that because I'm like on the edge of doing it or not, and I really need your prayer because I want to, but I have some giants that I need to face in my life still, and I don't want to do that without facing them first, you know? But yeah, just keep me in your prayers about that. <laughs> Man, we definitely will. We definitely will. You know, when it comes to facing those things, the Spirit of God lives in you, and you don't have to face them alone. And Jesus Christ is the key. He'll face them through you. So yielding those areas as well, God can, he's got the power to overcome it. Okay. Um, I just wanted to praise the Lord that I was able to go this year. Um, hearing all the preaching throughout the week, it really spoke to my heart and pushed me to realizing I was far away from the Lord, you know. My relationship wasn't with God, and He wasn't my God anymore. He was my parents' God. And um, uh, I surrendered my life to the Lord this week, and Amen. yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good stuff. It's good. Amen. I want to praise the Lord that I got to go this year, and uh, all the messages were good. They all spoke to me, but what I learned was that I can trust God with anything, with all my prayers and my giants, that he'll help me get through it, that he'll help me. He listens to me Amen. when I pray, and uh, just praise the Lord that I got to go. Amen. Praise the Lord. Did you hear this guy? I just want to praise the Lord. <laughs> That's come, that came from deep down. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> And he's growing up on us. Amen. Okay, Brother John in the back there has got to praise. So I just want to put a disc. Whoa. I'm not a teenager. Okay. But uh, moving up here. Yeah, I know. I look like it, but I'm not. Um, moving up here, starting a new job, getting back on track with, you know, getting out of my parents' place again. It was a little rough, bit of a rough time. And then uh, I got a phone call from a really, really good buddy for mine from college, and uh, he calls me and says, I'm not doing good. And I'm like, okay, what's going on? He says, well, I've, you know, I've had Lyme's disease for years now, and that finally kind of went away a little bit. I said, okay, what's going on? And he goes, well, I've got infections in both of my legs. And so I started praying about that. I said, I'm going to pray about it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really see a miracle here. Then he calls me and he says, I just found out I've got staph infection in 80% of my body. Mm. And I thought, oh my gosh, what, God, like, what are you doing? What's happening? And uh, so I said, okay, we're going to pray about it. Two days later, he gives me a call. Hey, I just want to let you know that I spent the weekend updating my will and I put you in it. And that's really hard to hear a friend say, I put you in my will I could die tomorrow, next week, in a couple years, whatever it may be. So, well, we're not going to think about that. We're just going to think about today. You're still alive, so let's think about that. He goes, okay. So I'm still praying, and I'm laying in bed that night, and I'm like, God, I don't know what you're trying to do. I don't know what, what's going on with him, and, and I just started praying. I just said, God, whatever you're doing, just heal him. He's got a heart for you. He wants to serve you, and he loves you. Just heal him. And uh, the next day, I get a phone call again. And I'm like, oh, great. I see his name, and I'm like, I don't even want to know what's going on. But I pick up the phone. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. I just got back from the doctors. I thought, great, more bad news. And he goes, well, according to the doctor, the staph infection's gone. Mm. And I thought, praise the Lord. Amen. And that's the power of prayer. Amen. And sometimes you get on this really big high where prayer is like, yeah, you know God can do everything and anything. And all of a sudden, you start going downhill, where it's like you start doubting God, you're doubting and doubting. And then you're in your lowest valley, and boom, God sends a miracle, heals people, answers a prayer request, and boom, gets shot back up again. And you're like, yeah, God can do anything. But I really did, after praying for, for my friend, just realize, you know what? God is the great physician. He's the great healer, and he does love us. And uh, I just wanted to share that praise request that, that God really does answer prayers. For, for all you teenagers who are like, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me, you've got a good church family who is going to pray for you and is going to see God work miracles inside your life um, because 
you've done exactly what the Bible says. You've casted your burdens upon him, for he cares for you. So I just wanted to, to share that with you guys. Amen. Praise the Lord, brother. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Oh, we got a mic. Right um, I just want to praise the Lord to what he did in my life this week. And um, the Lord really spoke to me about his will. And he just really helped me to see that I need to stop making plans for my life and um, just trust him because I had made all these future plans and I didn't really put God in the picture and even in my daily life I just kind of squeezed him in like on Wednesday nights for church and Sunday morning but I never really you know wanted a close relationship with him and the Lord just helped me see that I just need to seek him first and he'll show me what he has planned for my life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Anyone else? Bella? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm just so thankful that I got to go again. And it's just such a blessing to be able to go and get away from everything and um, just have that time um, that you can really hear God's voice. Even though there's a lot going on, it's still like a time of quietness where you can really hear God speak. And um, it's just so good, too, to see how God's moving um, in all the teens and everybody else. And um, also, it was good to be able to get to know some of the other counselors a little bit better. Um, and some of the uh, girls coming up into the youth group, too. And just um, for us to be able to get together and um, learn more about each other. And something that God was speaking to me about was patience and waiting on him which is not always easy. And that's something I really struggle with um, because I guess in my mind, um, if something's not happening right away, it's like, oh, maybe it's never gonna happen. And you start doubting that. Um, but I'm just so thankful that God keeps confirming that to me, just keeps reassuring me that it's okay to wait sometimes. And um, one of the messages um, still about David and everything, and about how before he went into the valley to face Goliath, he had a lot of training time. He had a lot of time just being a shepherd and doing what God had for him there. Yeah. And that trained him for the valley um, that he would face. And um, I'm just so thankful that God is relentless in that, and that if you're seeking him, he's going to keep just going to keep reassuring you. And um, he did that in my heart, and I'm just so thankful for that. Anyone else? Got Mariah. <laughs> well, um, kind of like my sister, I um, had my entire life planned out on um, <laughs> like everything, <laughs> like my job. <laughs> well, um, the Lord spoke to me and told me it wasn't his will for me and that I needed to change everything I planned out. And I just prayed to him last night, and I told him I was just going to let him lead me. And, yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's good. That's good. Amen. Yes. Amen. Beth, Beth me. Hey, I'm really nervous, so... Well, I'm really thank God that I got to go. Uh, a big giant in my life is trust with not just God, but people. And I just learned like a lot of new things that I thought I already knew. And I um, put my full like trust in God, like for him to guide my life. Because if you trust in him, then he'll help you trust other people. So Amen. that's all. That's good. Praise the Lord. That's very good. Thank you. Amen. Right down, oh, okay, right over here. We got one right over here, sorry. What Liz, let me go back to all right. I just wanna praise the Lord that while I was on the trip, I surrendered my life to the Lord. Amen, praise the Lord. Mrs. Adams? I'll try not to cry, my kids will make fun of me. Um, <laughs> I want to praise the Lord for this church. Amen. We've been here eight years. And um, 
I was saved back when Cameron was the one. And uh, we went to New Mexico first, then we went to Italy, and we came here. And uh, we were in and out of church many years. And um, I went astray. I got wrapped into the worldly ways. Um, I looked to things to cope. And uh, there was a lot of struggles between me and my oldest. And God brought us here to this church. Yeah. And um, Pastor Hall has been such a huge blessing with me and my oldest. And uh, I know God put him in our lives for a reason. And these boys weren't going to go on this trip. And Ashton wanted to, but then he didn't want to because Big Brother couldn't go. And then Pastor Hall approached me. <laughs> and uh, we prayed. And uh, God gave us the means to do it because with us moving, kind of tight on the funds, but God provides in so many ways. Amen. And it's not just financial, but the church family we have. And they just, we need your prayers because we're getting ready to make this big move. And for two years, I became so close to so many here. And it, it's hard for me because I'm scared that I'm going to stray again. So please pray for us that we can find that right church and, Amen. and stay as strong with God. Amen. We sure will. We sure will. Okay, um, I just want to praise the Lord that I got to go, and it was just such a great week, and I just, God really has been speaking to me lately about trusting him and having confidence in him, and that he is big enough to face all my giants, and he's big enough to handle every little thing that I struggle with, and, um, and just that I can trust him even when I don't see him move, you know, even when I think he's not doing anything, I, I can trust him. And, um, he also has been speaking to me lately about just being content where I'm at and in life, and but also at the same time being able um, to step out of my routine and to step out of my comfort zone. And praise the Lord that he helped me do that a little bit this week as well. And yeah. <laughs> Amen. That's great. Praise the Lord. I think we might have one up in the in the sound booth. Maybe a couple up there. Huh? Somebody might want to make their way back there. Anyone else on the floor while there? I I can go whenever. Oh. <laughs> I have the power. Okay. <laughs> so ahead, um, <laughs> so uh, I I am so grateful to get to go on these trips. It's such a um, it's it's amazing, and um, I get as much or more out of these trips than the kids do, I'm sure. Um, well, I think uh, it, it, it's a time of uh, renewal for me too, and God definitely speaks to my heart during these times. One of the best things that, uh, that happens up there is I get to see these tough, tough kids cry. <laughs> uh, they, they go down the altar and they come back with tears in their eyes. I, I love it. It's, it's God moving in their hearts, and I, I get to see that moment when they, when they make those decisions, and it's, it's amazing. And, uh, and, and I just love it. And then it, it draws, uh, draws us all closer together and me, you know, breaks my heart for them as I see the things they struggle with. And, um, you know, it, it's an amazing time. I love it. So, Caleb. Okay. You've got you to be close to it. I was ready, you know. <laughs> we have this set up. <laughs> so uh, I want to praise the Lord that I got to go. Um, and it's my first year as a counselor, even though most of the churches didn't believe that because I look like I'm 15 and I have pink hair. <laughs> I had so many being like, um, you can't have that coffee. You're not 18. And I'm like, you're right, I'm not 18. I'm 24, but thank you. <laughs> anyway, so when I was in high school, it was, it was so easy to do what everyone else was doing because I, I went for seven years. I went every possible year that I could go. And each time, you'd think that with 16 services and five devotions that, that something would happen. And one year did, one year I got saved, but then every year after that, I kind of fell back into that same pattern. And coming here this year, I decided, listen, I could, I could go, and I could go for the sports, I can go for the competition, 
Or I could, I could try to learn something. So I brought my notebook and I brought my t pen and then I forgot my Bible in my car. <laughs> so then I found another Bible and I'm taking these notes and I'm listening. And sure enough, after the second service, taking notes just becomes habit and I'm on autopilot and I'm just writing down things without really listening to what I'm writing down. And there was this one service, and I had been less than a week, and I don't even remember who, who taught the service, but it was about God's will. And what I remember in particular are that there are two different kinds of God, wills of God. And one is the apparent will of God, and then there's the permissive will of God. And the apparent will of God is what is obvious in the Bible that you should do, where it just says, you know, go to church, you need to pray, you need to read your Bible. Those are pretty obvious, you don't need to pray about it. And then there's the permissive will of God, which is where when you're falling out of God's will, there are some things that he just lets you do. And it's, it could be good for your life, and you know, it'll get you places, but it's not God's absolute best for you. No. And so I grew up in this church. I spent my entire elementary and high school here. And when I got back from Okinawa, I was like, this is fine. I can continue going to church because this is something I've done my entire life. And I don't need anybody to tell me to do it. I don't need God's will to tell me to do it. I'm going to just keep doing it because that's what I've been doing for 15 years, you know. Um, and Brother Rod said something during our, our together devotion, which was that the easiest thing you can do in life is fall out of church. And within a month, within two months, I'm thinking, I can just miss one service. I, I can miss a Wednesday service. You know, a Sunday night is fine because I went to both Sunday morning ones. You know, and there's all these justifications that are going on in my head that shouldn't be because it's in the Bible. It's an apparent one. It's one that's just God's telling you to do it and you should do it. And the next thing I knew, it's been weeks, it's been months since I've been in church. And one of the big things that I've learned is how, how can God show me what his will is for my life? if I'm not here to hear it. <laughs> um, and there's all these things happening within the past couple of months, and I kept thinking, what is going on? And it's, you know, how can God bless me? How can God give me these things if I'm not going to use them correctly? And, you know, how can I find the answers to these questions that I'm throwing out into the air if I'm not here to hear the answers, if I'm not reading the Bible to find the answers? And um, That's good. And it's something I've known my whole life, but something that just all of a sudden made sense. <laughs> I was just so excited that suddenly it meant something to me, and it's not just something that I'm hearing from everyone everywhere. This was for me, Amen. you know. Praise and um, anyway, I just want to praise the Lord for that. That's awesome. Praise the Lord. So good. Amen. Okay, anyone else? Brother Kendrick. I just want to praise the Lord that I got to go. Um, uh, before, I w before I left, uh, me and my mom were, we had a, a big argument and um, uh, just the morning service before we even left for camp, um, I was looking forward to camp. I was, I, w I was almost looking past that morning service, but God really got a hold of my heart before I even went to camp. And it it just like the Bible is so powerful in that way that it can just grip your heart when you're not expecting it, and <laughs> it was swift. Um, and uh, before, like while we were on the trip, I uh, apologized to my mom over Miss Jeannie's phone, and um, and and she forgave me. And while I was on the trip, the Lord really spoke to my heart on so many different things. And it's just, it's a blessing to, um, like Bella said, to get away from everything, to get away from social media, to get away from media itself, and just be with God, like, yeah. um, and just be with other believers. And... I, I just want to praise the Lord that I got to go, um, and I surrendered my life to whatever God would have me to do in my life, yeah. and I also need to get baptized, so. Yes, he does. <laughs> telling all of you guys, so, um, yeah. <laughs> 
So um, once my dad gets back from Japan, I'm going to get baptized. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good. Like it. Amen. It's open. If anybody still feels like they want to share, um, we want to give you that opportunity to do it. Go ahead, Brother Todd, and then Espy. I guess since I have the mic, I'll just go. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> I praise the Lord I got to go. And before I even went to camp Wednesday night, Brother Rod taught a service on a message on reading the Bible. And I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot. And so far, I've been reading it every day. Amen. And Sunday, like, I realized what I read was in the message of that pastor was giving. I was like, wow, that's like so cool how that works. And just camp was, it was amazing. Like it always is. God moved and I just glad I got to go. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. He did move, man. I wish we could really put it into, it's hard to explain. You, you just almost have to experience it. And we're trying to, to, um, get some some rooms opened up up there where more families can come but if you want to rough it and go to the dorms with the kids you can do that too it's a good time <laughs> i guess <laughs> sleep on the squeaky beds <laughs> you know <laughs> it's you know what it is a good time the, the, it's not the accommodations are as good as they're going to be because you're in the mountains but um in the middle of nowhere but man god just shows up in a powerful way and i think that we have ears to hear too as well being away from everything anyone else Yes. Um, I praise the Lord that I got to go. And um, I was so happy because Ashton got to go. He's my best friend. He tricked me and said he wasn't going. <laughs> I was mad at him. <laughs> and um, the Lord really spoke to my heart. And, and I'm so happy that I got to know everyone that got there more. I mean, the Phillips girls, I was like, oh, they're so annoying. When I got to meet them, <laughs> when I got to meet them, I was like, oh, wow, I love them. <laughs> and so um, I'm so happy. I got to know Miss Burton more and everyone else. And um, so, like, I have a giant in my life, and I, I have a few, but I know that the Adams are moving. And they are like family to me. And Cameron, he scares me. <laughs> and but I'm still gonna miss them. And um, I just pray that they have a safe trip and uh, that I won't like cry as much as I think I am when they move, because they are like a really big part of my life. And God, I'm so happy they got to have them in my life. And that shouldn't stop. <laughs> And so, like, Bethany, she um, helped me when I was sad at camp. She came up to me and gave me a hug. She's a huge blessing in my life, Abigail. I love her so much. And Hannah, she is just a party person. She likes to have fun. <laughs> and everyone that I got to meet as much as I had a wonderful time, Bella, she was awesome. Yeah, and I'm so glad I got to go, so thanks. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, anyone else before we wrap up? Anybody else? I want to make sure we give everyone an opportunity. Okay, we got Aaliyah. Got Aaliyah. Um, oh, I'm going to start sweating in my eyes already. <laughs> <laughs> Just um, praise the Lord that I got to go, and I got to... The Lord really revealed to me what one of my giants were, and it was the fear of being alone. <laughs> but I realized I don't have to be alone, because I'm never alone. Amen. I just really praise the Lord that he's always been there for me. <sighs> Shake it off. <laughs> Shake it off. <laughs> but, um... I really want to praise the Lord that I got to know a lot of people in the youth group that I never would have talked to, like Natalie. I thought she was a brat, but <laughs> <laughs> she's not in here right now, so. <laughs> she's right there. Oh, hi, Natalie. <laughs> she's right there. Okay. So anyway, I already told her that. So, um, but she's really nice, and I praise the Lord that I got to get to know her. Um, I also praise the Lord that I got to get to know Kayla. She's really awesome. I praise the Lord that she 
that I got to get to know her a lot better. Because she's really impacted my life already. Amen. And yeah, but um, I praise the Lord that I got to get to know my best friends better because I don't know. <laughs> Never really take the time to listen to them. I'm always the one who's talking. <laughs> um, but um, I praise the Lord that they're patient with me because I'm not that patient with them. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Amen. Thank you very much. All right. I think we're going to get ready to wrap it up. Um, I just want to encourage parents. We, we have another trip coming up the 23rd to the 26th of July. It'll be in Moab. Um, we'll leave on a Sunday right after the morning service. We'll go down to Moab. We'll we get to knock every door in the in the in the city, and that's the goal. And along with that, we incorporate some fun. We get to um, whitewater raft, and we we do a hike up to the Corona Arch, and we have a chance to just pray and sing praises to the Lord. It's just a beautiful trip. We want to encourage all of our teens that are able to go to be a part of that trip. I promise you, it'll be a blessing to you. Have Brother Stephen come. He's going to spend just a few moments in the Word, and then we'll we'll have an invitation. So in Bible college, we have a class called homiletics where you have to preach a sermon in five minutes. And I have four. <laughs> so I, 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 uh, the Lord just put on my heart a verse, um, Hebrews 4.15. If you guys will turn there with me, I'd like you to see it. Um, if you'd be in prayer for uh, my family, my wife, we... We're flying to Virginia because we got news on Tuesday that my my uh, people passed away, which is my mom's dad. Um, and we're going to be traveling this week. So just be praying for my mom. And um, as probably a lot of you guys know, she's been going through a lot of loss lately. And she just really needs um, the prayers and stuff. So um, but the Lord put this verse on my heart a minute ago. And um, verse number 15, Hebrews 4.15 says, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The high priest that they're talking about there is Jesus Christ. And he's the person, he's our, he's our mediator. He's the one that goes between us and God. And he's the one that... Um, he came to earth for us, to die for us, to love us, and he didn't do that. Um, it wasn't just a simple thing for God to do that. Um, and it says that he was touched with every infirmity that anyone in this world's ever faced. Anything that you are feeling in your life right now, chances are Christ felt it as well. And when he took all the sins of the world upon himself, he felt every murder every rape, every hardship, every horrible thing that's ever happened in this world, he felt it. He took it upon himself, and he paid for it with his own life. And because of that, we have a high priest that we can pray to and that he knows exactly what we're going through. And as I'm hearing these testimonies and stuff, and I'm thinking about my own experience at camp and the hardships that, that people are going through and these teenagers are dealing with and stuff, my heart breaks, but at the same time I'm encouraged with the knowledge that Jesus Christ knows exactly what we're going through. And whether you decide to say it to him or not, he still is there right beside you if you're a child uh, of him. So I encourage each and every person in this room, if, if you're struggling with something, and I, I imagine most of us are, whatever that hardship is on your heart, the Bible says, let us, let us therefore come boldly. Boldly. That, that means that as, as I think of Mrs. Lee, as she talks to her kids, she doesn't, she doesn't fear telling them what to do. Okay? And she's bold. You know, she's just like, boys, take care of this, that, that, and the next, right? That's boldness. Well, the same way, we can go to Christ and we can say, Lord, I need your help on this. And he knows exactly what needs to happen in your life to solve that problem or, or to allow you to go through that, that, that issue or whatever it is in a way that's going to strengthen your faith. And our choice is whether we allow it to strengthen us and allow it to strengthen our relationship with God or not. And I pray that each and every one of us would just allow Christ to 
take our infirmities upon himself and, and to allow him to fill for us. And that we'll keep our, our, um, our aspirations, our, our fears, our hopes, our dreams, and know that he has the best in mind for each and every person. And for those teenagers, for those of you who surrendered your life, I, I remember doing the same thing back in seventh grade. I remember just saying, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. I had no idea what that meant. I had no idea what path the Lord would set me on, but I knew that whatever he wanted me to do was going to be the best for my life. And I could not, every time I think back to that, I just am so, so, so happy that the Lord spoke to my heart and led me to do that because who knows where I would be today. And I, I feel like, well, I know that that single decision was what shaped my entire life. And I'm a product of, of the Lord speaking to my heart and helping me to keep those decisions. And, and if you'll rely on God, if you'll pray to Him and you'll allow Him to work in your heart and lead you through your life, He's going to do it. There's no doubt about it. He came to earth specifically for you. And He wants to take care of you. He's felt our infirmities. He is ready. He is sitting at that throne of grace, ready to receive whatever prayers, whatever asking, whatever, whatever we want to come to Him with, Come boldly. Let's go ahead and pray.